As of right now, we could be just over a week away from the fourth launch of Starship. SpaceX has said the launch could be as soon as June 5th, with the only thing possibly holding them back being regulatory approval, which is still pending. However, this approval process has only improved over time, and when combined with the company's confidence to set a launch date so soon, June 5th seems like a realistic date. With that being said, it brings up questions regarding SpaceX's plans for this fourth flight. Flight 3 was a big improvement, but still failed to complete some of the overall objectives. That's why SpaceX has made some changes to both the vehicle itself and part of the mission profile for this next test flight. Here I'll go more in depth into some of the improvements made to Flight 4 hardware, the mission profile, what went wrong on the last flight, and more. SpaceX has a different objective going into Flight 4 than they did for the last flight attempt. Flight 3 featured a host of in-space objectives including propellant transfers, using the payload door, and eventually the re-entry and recovery process. While those ending objectives were not fully successful, that is now the sole focus of Flight 4. In a statement, the company said, The fourth flight test turns our focus from achieving orbit to demonstrating the ability to return and reuse Starship in Super Heavy. The primary objectives will be executing a landing burn and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico with the Super Heavy booster, and achieving a controlled entry of Starship, they said. With these altered objectives and a lot of new data from the last flight, some changes and upgrades were made to the vehicle and hardware. For example, in another statement, SpaceX highlights that, to accomplish this, several software and hardware upgrades have been made to increase overall reliability and address lessons learned from Flight 3. They went on to say, the SpaceX team will also implement operational changes, including the jettison of the Super Heavy's hot stage following boost pack to reduce booster mass for the final phase of flight. In other words, the large ring that sits on top of Super Heavy and between the booster and ship will be jettisoned and discarded over a minute after stage separation. With Starship working to become a fully reusable vehicle, it's possible that SpaceX plans to jettison the hot stage ring only for some of the initial integrated flight tests to gather data and achieve a successful landing. It's also worth pointing out that during Flight 3, the booster experienced a few different issues while returning through the atmosphere, including oscillations that could have to do with the hot stage ring. Either way, we can expect to see the ring ejected not long after stage separation. Besides that change, there were a few very important upgrades made related to specific problems that occurred on Flight 3. On the last test, following stage separation, Super Heavy initiated its boost back burn, and all 13 engines ran successfully until 6 engines began shutting down, triggering a benign early boost back shutdown. SpaceX confirmed that the booster then continued to descend until attempting its landing burn, which commands the same 13 engines used during boost back to perform the planned final slowing for the rocket before a soft touchdown in the water. But the six engines that shut down early in the boost back burn were disabled from attempting the landing burn startup, leaving seven engines commanded to start up with two successfully reaching main stage ignition. The booster had lower than expected landing burn thrust when contact was lost at approximately 462 meters in altitude over the Gulf of Mexico, and just under seven minutes into the mission. In a new statement, SpaceX said, The most likely root cause for the early boost back burn shutdown was determined to be continued filter blockage where liquid oxygen is supplied to the engines, leading to a loss of inlet pressure in engine oxygen turbo pumps. SpaceX implemented hardware changes ahead of Flight 3 to mitigate this issue, which resulted in the booster progressing to its first ever landing burn attempt. As far as upgrades, they said, Super heavy boosters for Flight 4 and beyond will get additional hardware inside oxygen tanks to further improve propellant filtration capabilities. In utilizing data gathered from Super Heavy's first landing burn attempt, additional hardware and software changes are being implemented to increase startup reliability of the Raptor engines and landing conditions. Not only is the booster improved for this next flight, but the upper stage is getting some upgrades as well. With the focus of Flight 4 being a controlled re-entry of the upper stage, they had to make some alterations to try and ensure this process goes well on the next launch. During Flight 3, several minutes after Starship began its coast phase, the vehicle began losing the ability to control its attitude. Starship continued flying its normal trajectory, but given the loss of attitude control, the vehicle automatically triggered a pre-planned command to skip its planned on-orbit relight of a single Raptor engine. SpaceX said in a new statement that, The lack of attitude control resulted in an off-nominal entry, with the ship seeing much larger than anticipated heating on both protected and unprotected areas. High-definition live views of entry and a considerable amount of telemetry were successfully transmitted in real-time by Starlink terminals operating on Starship. The flight's conclusion came when telemetry was lost at approximately 65 kilometers in altitude, roughly 49 minutes into the mission. The most likely root cause of the unplanned roll was determined to be clogging of the valves responsible for roll control. SpaceX has since added additional roll control thrusters on upcoming Starships to improve attitude control redundancy and upgraded hardware for improved resilience to blockage. These changes are hoping to solve the problem and allow Starship to much more efficiently and less violently re-enter the atmosphere in one piece. 
Following the flight test, SpaceX led the investigation efforts with oversight from the FAA and participation from NASA and the National Transportation and Safety Board, or NTSB. During Flight 3, neither vehicle's automated flight safety system was triggered, and no vehicle debris impacted outside of predefined hazard areas. Pending FAA finding of no public safety impact, a license modification for the next flight can be issued without formal closure of the mishap investigation, they pointed out. They were also quoted saying, Upgrades derived from the flight test will debut on the next launch from Starbase on Flight 4, as we turn our focus from achieving orbit to demonstrating the ability to return and reuse Starship in Super Heavy. The team incorporated numerous hardware and software improvements in addition to operational changes. Besides those changes, the flight profile is similar to what we've seen in the past. At T-49 minutes before liftoff, SpaceX will begin loading propellant into the ship. Around 10 minutes later, that process will start for the booster. With only a few minutes left in the count, the vehicle will be full of propellant and ready to launch. At T-10 seconds, water from the flame deflector will begin shooting out in preparation for booster ignition. Finally, Starship will ignite its engines and lift off for a fourth time. At T plus one minute and two seconds, max Q will occur, the moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. A minute and a half later, and the main engines will cut off. At T plus two minutes and 45 seconds, hot staging will commence and the two vehicles will separate. The booster will then start its boost back burn and won't shut off its engines until T plus three minutes and 52 seconds. Interestingly, just seconds after the boost back burn shut down is when the hot stage ring will be jettisoned according to SpaceX's Flight 4 flight profile. By T plus 6 minutes and 39 seconds, the booster is transonic and getting ready to attempt its landing. A few seconds later, it will begin its landing burn until T plus 7 minutes and 4 seconds. At that point, assuming everything has gone according to plan, the booster will have splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico in one piece. Focusing on Starship, it's not expected to begin re-entry until 47 minutes and 25 seconds into the flight. By T plus an hour and 3 minutes into the mission, the upper stage is transonic. Within the next 3 minutes, it will slow and become subsonic attempting a flip and landing burn. This all leads to an expected landing at T plus 1 hour, 5 minutes, and 48 seconds into the flight, all of which are set to happen very soon. If the specific date of June 5th wasn't enough, a few days ago on the 23rd, Elon tweeted Flight 4 in about 10 days. It's clear that SpaceX is ready and confident the FAA is going to provide approval soon. If SpaceX is successful and manages to complete reentry and landing milestones on this flight, it would mark a significant accomplishment for the program. With those steps complete, they can begin working toward actual landing and reuse attempts rather than disposal in the ocean, something to look forward to in the coming weeks. SpaceX has made some changes to both the physical Starship vehicle itself as well as the launch plan. These come after new data was gathered during Flight 3 in areas where issues arose. These improvements could be put to the test as soon as June 5th. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.